Lightroom's adjustment brushes are one of the most powerful editing tools there is, and most photographers barely scratch the surface of them. So in this video, we're diving into all the ins and outs, and I'll take you on a walkthrough of some of the ways that I use them to take images from this to this. If you're new to my channel, I'm Chelsea Nicole, and this is part of my Edit Together Tuesday, sometimes Wednesday series, where I share simple, actionable editing tips for portrait and wedding photographers like you, so that you can create a portfolio that you're mega proud of. So grab some coffee and let's dig into Lightroom together. The adjustment brush has long been one of my very favorite tools in Lightroom from making specialized color fixes to retouching skin to creating super dreamy backgrounds. It's my go-to for quickly taking photos to the next level. And thanks to Lightroom's recent advances in AI powered masking, this tool is now more precise and easier than ever to use, making it perfect for any photographer that's really busy and wants fast pro-level edits without needing to waste a bunch of time in Photoshop. So to get started with this, let's first do a quick overview to get a bit more cozy with all of the ins and outs of this tool. The adjustment brush can be found under the develop area by going to your masking menu, which is this little circle here, clicking that, and then scrolling down to the brush icon, which looks like a little paintbrush and clicking that. Or you can also use keyboard shortcut K, which will quickly create a new mask layer with that brush tool pre-selected. This is what I like to do because I love keyboard shortcuts to make things nice and quick when editing. You'll see then your masking menu here with the new mask selected with that brush tool. And you can tell we're on the brush tool because you'll see the little icon here over your image, which is the brush icon. This mask menu can either be dragged into your panel so it might show up for you here, or what I like to do is I'd like to drag it out and you can kind of move it around based on what works best for you or even make this smaller or bigger. But I like to have this menu out so that I'm able to see more of my settings in the side panel when editing. There are five main brush settings we need to know for editing portraits of people with brushes. So let's quickly go over each of those and then we'll dive into editing a photo together. First is the size of our brush, which is this first slider here under our brush panel. And this can quickly be adjusted up or down simply by using the left and right brackets on your keyboard. The second setting is going to be our feather. And this is gonna control how soft or hard the edges of our brush are. And you can see this on our brush by the outer circle. So if I were to use the keyboard shortcut for this, which is shift bracket, you can see when that outer ring gets closer and smaller, that's going to be a harder brush versus if I do shift bracket, right bracket to make it softer, we now have a softer brush. Next is going to be our flow. And flow is similar to opacity. This lets us control how much of that effect is applied with each stroke so that we can build on our effect over multiple brush strokes. So. As an example, if I were to just go ahead and increase my exposure to 100% for this brush, we would not do that, but it makes it an easy example. And I were to keep that flow at 100% and brush onto our image, we can see it's going to be 100% exposure and so it's going to light out our image. And that's because I have this brush set at that maximum opacity. So say instead I pressed keyboard shortcut two and the number keys is what controls our flow. So two will be about 20% opacity, six would be 60% opacity. So by going to two, I can now slowly brush on and build on that effect. So this is really nice when we're wanting to layer things on, such as when editing backgrounds, I'll usually use a lower opacity and build on that desired amount. And then where it's beneficial to use a higher flow, such as 100, is when I'm wanting that brush to brush on super nice and uniform. So typically I'll use this when I'm editing skin tones of people and I'm wanting a nice even brush effect and then I can then raise or lower that brush effect. The next setting is our density. And this also controls opacity, but I find that it's easier to think of it like your maximum opacity for that brush. So for example, if I were to keep that flow at 100 and keep my exposure at 100, but lower my density to say 30% and brush onto our image again, even if I were to keep brushing on and layering on that image, the maximum that brush will go to is that 
30% of opacity. So I'm basically saying this is the max intensity of this brush. I'll typically leave this at the default of 100, but this can be useful if you're wanting to lower the effect of the brush while keeping the flow at 100 so that you can paint nice and evenly without any potential overlap. And then the last Lightroom brush setting that's important to know is keyboard shortcut alt or option, which will bring up your erase tool. So when you click this, our brush has now minus in the middle, which means it is in erase mode. So simply by putting your finger down on the button or taking it off, you can either brush or erase really quickly. And then one last thing, actually, if you toggle on this show overlay, which is keyboard shortcut O, you can see precisely where you've brushed on your image and you can easily toggle that on or off. You can also change the color of your overlay. Usually it's nice to keep this a nice bright color so that you can really easily see where you've brushed and then O will allow you to take that overlay off so you can see the effect it's having on the image. All right, now that we have the basic controls of the brush tool down, let's edit a photo together. For our photo example, we're gonna start with our basic edits already dialed in and just focus on the Lightroom brush tool. But if you want a full tutorial on how I get my base edit, I'll also include a link in the description for you to check out after this. So for this photo, I've already captured it to add some separation and depth by including that magical sun flare, that little bit of backlight, but I'm wanting to add even more haze to just give even more separation, depth, help that subject pop, and really add that extra light and airy aesthetic that I love in my images. The first thing I'm gonna do here is just a quick adjustment on my background. So I clicked background. You could also come create new mask, select background, and I'm just going to brighten up in the shadows of the background just a tiny bit. This is because I, I just wanted a little extra lift of that background without it impacting my subject. All right, that looks pretty good. So now we're gonna press keyboard shortcut K to bring up our first brush mask. And the first thing that I'm looking at here on this image is really for any distractions that are going to be pulling my eyes away from the subject. And the one thing my eyes go to are these dark spots on these bushes, these like shadowy areas that are pulling my eyes away from them. So we're just gonna come down and do a quick adjustment here, bringing up our shadows, bring up the exposure a bit and maybe lower that contrast just a tad. Uh, and actually before I do any of this, we're gonna go and just reset our flow and density back to 100 on our brush because we changed those for our example. Bring our flow to about 80 and then go ahead and just brush it onto our bushes here. And you can see as I'm working, I'm just adjusting that flow, which is my opacity, just up and down as needed. And just kind of brushing over these shadowy areas. That looks good. We can come back down in here and I'm just gonna raise up those blacks a bit, a bit more in those shadows. And voila, we got rid of our dark patches. So we could stop here because this is actually looking really nice. But this is where I like to have a little bit more fun, especially with my portfolio images. And for this photo, I feel like we could take it up a notch by just adding a bit of extra warmth for even more of that sun-kissed glow. So for this, I'm gonna press K to create a new brush mask. And I'm gonna come into my color settings. I'm gonna bring up that temperature just a bit here. I'm gonna bring up my shadows and I'm going to add just a tiny bit of exposure. And for this, since we're brushing onto this background and really it's working off of this sun in our background here and we're just like bringing it out even more. So we're gonna be painting onto our background to just emphasize that kind of sun-kissed glow. So we know on a nice soft brush, I'm not gonna worry about my subjects just yet. So I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do and I'm just gonna brush over some of these areas that I wanna give just even more of a glowy look in the image here. And I'm also gonna come into this God Ray right here with a bit of a smaller brush, still nice and soft, and just make that God Ray pop even more. 
All right, this is looking really good, really glowy. A little bit more behind them, perfect. And so now why I haven't really worried about where it's touching on the subject is with AI, I'm able to come down and say subtract subject from my mask. And this is going to take any of that brush that I've applied on the background off of them. And this is gonna create a more realistic look similar to how the light would be interacting with the background because it's no longer on the front of them, it's just behind them, giving that little bit of sun kiss to our background. A couple final tweaks that I wanna make uh, are just bringing that brush tool back up again. We're going to just make a quick tweak to our sky here. And I wanna bring in a little bit more of that sky detail. You could technically do this with the select sky uh, in your masking menu, but I actually don't want to impact the left side of my sky here. So I just wanna bring in a little bit more detail in through here. So I'm gonna do this with the brush tool just so that I can really selectively bring in just a little bit more of that detail there. And quick tip is I could just avoid those mountains, but if you're brushing close to the mountains and you don't want that tool impacting them, one of the great things here is we can come back into our brush menu, say subtract, and go to subtract objects. And with the AI being smart as it is, we can just really messily select that object. And in this case, that object is our mountain and it's automatically going to detect that mountain. If we go, oh, you can see we now have a nice clean mask of that mountain. So the areas that I like overlapped with my brush are not impacting it. It's only impacting our sky. So we bring that off and back on. It's very subtle, but it's just bringing in a little bit of extra blues into our sky. And the very last thing I'm gonna do is create one more brush mask, just to add a little extra pop into our couple. So I'm gonna come down into our details panel. I'm gonna add a little extra sharpness, not too much, just a little extra, a little tiny bit of extra contrast, and I'm gonna bring those blacks down just a tad. And then we can come right in to their face here. Also gonna add just a little extra pop of white. And we'll go ahead and subtract any of that off of the background. And boom, there we go, toggle it on and off. And you can see it just adds a little extra pop on them. So if we zoom back out here, this is looking pretty good, but before we move on to our next photo where I want to demonstrate how to use the brush tool for skin retouching, the last thing that I'll do when looking at an image is just look for any areas where I might want to dial back what I did just a bit. Because I find that sometimes when we're editing, we can get a little happy with the brush tool and then it can end up being overly processed. And I don't think I really did that too much here. The one adjustment that I would make is actually coming back to our very first mask on the background. And one thing that I love to do to give a bit more of a natural aesthetic, the way light interacts with our backgrounds in real life is to come and do subtract linear gradient and we're just going to drag this off of our foreground. So really that effect is just impacting the mid and background and it's having this natural fall off and that looks even more natural. That's looking really nice. So we'll call this one done. Let's come over into our next photo, which is a little bit more of a close up. I already have my base edit applied as well as a couple brush settings already done to the image. This one is simply brightening up the shadows in around her face and arm. And then I have that warm haze applied to the background to give that really glowy aesthetic. And this is actually one of my common brush settings that I will do again and again. Uh, so if we come in here, you can see 
there is the temperature applied, but also I love doing a pop of color into those backgrounds to create even more warmth in the image. And a tip for this is to really keep that color consistent. So if you find that you're gravitating towards the same settings over and over again, a quick tip is to go into the preset area and you can save those settings out as a new preset. So you can title your preset here and save out settings that you find yourself using again and again and again. And this is something I've also done for myself. If you come in here, you'll see all of my brush presets that I've created over the last 15 years, really perfecting what works for me when it comes to creating those dreamy backgrounds, those glowing skin tones, and just even quick fixes like reducing redness when you have like sunburns or getting rid of green cast. Uh, so if you're interested in my brush presets, I actually have these available. It's 22 presets that have been a staple in my own workflow and also a game changer for a lot of my students. I'll include a link in the description if you're interested in checking those out. We have the basic look dialed in here, but the last thing that I wanted to show is how to retouch faces. So we're gonna come and press K to create a new mask. And then we're going to come down into our effects panel. So when it comes to skin softening, I mainly use the texture. So we're gonna go ahead and bring that down quite a bit. This allows us to really see what we're doing while we work. And we're also going to bring down the clarity just a tad. So if I do use clarity, I keep this pretty subtle. And the reason for this is the impact it has on skin tones. Clarity can have a very unnatural, heavy handed effect on skin, whereas the texture only really impacts the edge detail to reduce that skin tone texture without impacting the color and the contrast of the skin. I talk more about the differences between these two tools in a full retouching video that I'll link in the comments to watch after this if you're interested. But for this photo, we're just gonna go ahead and brush onto our subject here. I'm gonna come and just brush around the nose, on her cheek, a little bit on the chin here, just these areas that I'm wanting to reduce the texture a bit and create a bit of a softer appearance of the skin. We're also going to zoom out here and I'm just going to do a little bit of extra softening on her arm and back. It was a really cold day <laughs> when we shot this. A winter wedding and she was in a dress. So we have a bit of extra texture on her skin from those goosebumps. And we don't need to eliminate all of it. We're not going for a fake aesthetic, but this just smooths it out so that she has that nice creamy look to her skin. So we can go O to toggle this on and back off. And that is looking pretty good. The last thing I'll do is sometimes come up into this amount slider. And if the amount on the skin is too much, if it's looking unnatural, I'll just dial what I did back a little bit. And uh, I think it looks pretty good right there. This ensures that we're getting a glowing skin that looks natural and not overly processed. Zoom back out and there's our final photo. So I hope you enjoyed this overview of the brush tool. It's one of my absolute favorites. If you want to check out my Lightroom brushes and steal them to use on your own photos, I've linked it up in the description below. And now that you know how to add that extra touch using brushes, you might be wondering, well, how do I get that perfect base edit to start with? If so, be sure to check out this video next where I walk you through my full portrait editing process from raw photo all the way through to that beautiful final edit. And as always, happy editing, and I'll catch you in the next video.